Hey, Savvy friends, welcome to the Joy Stamp with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn, and it's our Fun Fold Friday. Today, I'm sharing with you my last Halloween card creation for the season using the Scary Cute Stamp Set and the Silhouette Dies. Go ahead and hold a life flip, and we'll get started. Hope you guys can see everything okay. We're not too shadowy today. I do have one piece that I'm gonna try to see if we can't move so it's not in our view anymore. Hold on. Maybe. Oh. Somehow I have a little black image in that corner there. We're gonna just scoot it so you guys can still see even though there's kind of a weird border. I apologize for that. Welcome, welcome to my fun fold on fun fold days. When you comment between now till midnight, either on YouTube or my Facebook Live um, video, I will put your name in for the chance to win the card that we're making in our video today. So be sure to comment, tell me something you like about this card, tell me anything, tell me how your week's going. I just love, love to hear from you. I also love online orders when you use our hostess code. Let me get it close so you can see. This is the hostess code for October. Every month the hostess code change, and every month I try to give out the rewards to one lucky um, shopper that shops with me that month. So please shop and use that code, and then if you are the lucky one, you might also get the hostess rewards for that month. All right, let me go ahead and show you the stamps that we're using. It's called the Scary Cute. Try to not have too much glare on here. This one is just adorable. And today we'll be using this little image here. There's three little silhouettes of our trick-or-treaters. I'm loving this little like alligator guy with his little nose and his little smile there. Just so much cute detail in this. Um, we're also using the little bats, the boo, trick-or-treat, you're so sweet, and say boo and scare on. And then I'm using what's called the Scary Silhouette Dies. Let me get it closer so you can see. That's where we get all of our die cuts for this image here. But this piece right here is from the Stylish Shapes for our circle today. All right, before we get too far into it, like I said, this is my last Halloween one for the month because Halloween's in about a week and a half. And I don't want to share anything else because I don't know if you'll get your stuff in time in order for you to stamp it. But I do want to show you the other options. Stamping have had three amazing Halloween stamp sets. So today's probably the best and last day I would suggest ordering and get them in time for you to use. Unless you expedite it or live really close to where they're shipped from. Alright, but the stamp set, this one is the best witches. One which is super cute. There's that black and white designer series paper that goes along with that beautifully. And then they have two more so that you've seen the bewitching. I did my stamp set of the month kit with that one. And then this is our third one, which is the one that we're using today, which can be a bundle. When you get two, you do save at 10%. So be sure to bundle and save. All right. Let me show you the card now because it's so beautiful. And this card was 100% inspired by another stamping friend named Tara's Stamps. I have her link over on my blog, so if you wanna see the difference between hers and mine, you can. I just added a little bit more embellishing to it and extra details that I'll talk about today in our video. But the fun thing about this, let me get it, there we go, focused in, is when we open it up, the inside is also the front. So this little, little lip here is seen from both open and closed. And then we have an extra little message hidden underneath a trick or treat. You're so sweet with our cute little bats. All right. Let me go ahead and show you how to make this. And for the blog that I referred to this from, she didn't have any measurements. So I was like, how can I figure out how to measure enough? Let me show you with my paper trimmer what I did. So I grabbed my paper trimmer and as just a, a ruler. So you can use your ruler or your grid or you can even use, yeah, your grid sheet that I have. Here's my stamp, it's already been inked, so it's colored, I apologize for that. But what I did was I went to this and I looked and I said, okay, this needs to be at least an inch, probably an inch and a quarter in order for me to have enough room so you can still see it on the inside and outside. So all I did was make a regular card base and then I cut off an inch and a quarter. So you can do this layout with many other um, stamp sets or designs just by taking off by measuring what you have, what you don't 
what you want to be seen by the bottom of your front there. All right, let's go ahead and get our pieces in. I want to show you some fun, fun things about this one. So this paper, you'll never guess it, is actually a Christmas paper set. Let me flip it over. So it's very, um, it looks supposed to be like snowflakes on one side, but it looks like stars, magical stars on this side, and with that gold beam there. It's called the Lights of Glow Designer Series Paper. This is part of my paper I used for my Christmas in July, and so I just happened to have it, and when I saw this card, and I was like, this is perfect. So I love using paper that's not traditionally made for a certain holiday for something else, and this one was perfect. That just measures at four by four, all of my measurements will be over my blog, but I'll give you a quick little briefing. A regular four by five and a quarter for our basic white, which we'll stamp on. I have Mango Melody is our circle for today. And then for my vellum, let me show you the secret for that one. I actually have what's called the Lovely Layers Vellum. Let me flip it over so you can see. They have different printed on vellum, and then they have just sheets of regular vellum as well. So I just use a sheet of one of those pieces of vellum and die cut that out instead of having a whole sheet that I have to cut anyway. So I love this. this year, these are three by three fourths by five. So it's just the perfect work with size. Okay, let's get our stamped pieces ready and then we can go ahead and start assembling. We will need the color for the day for this card is the starry sky, which I thought went perfect with our theme we have going on here with our stars and our haunted house. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. I slide that over just for a quick minute and let's get ready to stamp. What we're gonna do is grab our cute little images here, the three of them together, tap it a couple times, depending on how juicy your ink pad is. Mine is really juicy, so I'm liking that for this one. Um, I've used tried to use the Memento Black, and it just wasn't getting enough coverage for me, so I'm glad that we're switching over to the Starry Sky. Then just have it in the very bottom right corner, press down, and lift up. Ooh, so that came out a little bit blotchy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there, and that's okay. If that's what you like, go ahead and do that. If not, flip it over, and we'll try again. And I'm gonna do a practice, just to make sure. We'll do one on top here. Looking better until I get it, the coverage I want. Okay, that looks good. My Starry Sky is a very juicy because it's a newer ink pad. Juicy means it just has a lot more ink on it than normal. Okay, that, uh, still a little bit, a little bit blotchy, but we're gonna call it good for today. Okay. Go ahead and go to your saying, the Cebu and Scaron. We'll do a practice up here for that one too. Perfect. And then we'll put it on our little fake moon here. Cebu and Scaron. Super cute. For this basic white, we do want to do a couple more stamping. So we're going to do the trick or treat, you're so sweet, on the top center. Right about there. And then we're also going to grab our cute little bats and stamp them to the left of our greeting. Perfect. And lastly, our cute little boo. We want our boo to look like it's coming from these guys. Because it says say boo and scare on. So it just totally goes with the flow of this card. Okay, that should be all for our stamping. Now let's go ahead and grab our mats and we can attach them to it. So I have the Starry Sky mat, it's just a one eighth of an inch bigger than my basic white. So it's four and an eighth and five and three eighths. I put seal in each corner and one in the center. I usually like to use my liquid glue for things like this, but since I'm using a basic white, I'm going to go ahead and use my seal so I don't get any glue lines. Okay, cute. Then grab our designer series paper, flip it over. This one is a liquid glue one. We wanna be able to wiggle this when I don't place it down right the first time. Cause that usually happens. Go ahead and use your fingers as a guide. You wanna make sure we get borders and all around it. And the nice thing about this one, there's no like wrong direction. It can go any way. 
So that's perfect. Go and grab your card base, which I said was the four and a quarter. I had measured it at 11, had scored it at four and a quarter, sorry, five and a half, cut off one and a quarter inches. But my measurements for if you just want to skip that whole extra cutoff piece is over my blog too. Okay, grab our bone folder. And we'll attach these pieces on. Go on the outside, do a little bit on the inside, give yourself about half an inch-ish around, so that way when we press down and we squish, it doesn't squish out, but just fills those gaps. Ooh, I'm loving this color combo. Such a pretty one. Okay, let's see how this is gonna look on the inside. Our moment of truth, make sure that we're not, that we can still see our cute little image there. And we have plenty of head space, perfect. Looks good. All right, we'll set this aside. We have our cute little bats I've die cut out. Those are part of those silhouettes as well. Now we need our vellum, which we've die cut that out. And then let me show you how this piece comes and how I got this one. So when I die cut these, I do them all at the same time for my basic black. But I have my little house is in this part here as well. So I left it in there so you can see how I'm not wasting that center piece. I'm actually cutting it all at the same time and then we just pull apart this extra to expose our branches. And if it's tricky to come out, just grab your paper snips or take your pick tool and those pieces will come right out. And then you'll find these pieces all over your house for the next three days. <laughs> just kidding. You're good, you'll clean it up right afterwards. I am rarely good and usually we'll find it later on. Little paper confetti. There you go. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead. Try to get that last piece. Flip this part over. And we need to add dimensionals. We want to create kind of a window effect here between the vellum and that basic basic black cardstock. So I'm using the minis. If I had basic black um, dimensionals, I would totally use them. But currently I'm all out so I'm just using my basic white the thing is you have to be super careful not to have it showing so if you want to grab your paper snips go through a couple of your dimensionals and even cut the mini ones in half and you want to keep it on the sheet so the bottom half doesn't lose the stick so I'm gonna grab a couple of these little pieces here and we'll put them in each corner area and get that one off some piece some spots are wide enough that I could totally put a whole dimensional whole mini one right there but other parts are just so narrow and we just don't want that the the magic of how it's popping up to be seen right okay I'll put one right there and let's see if we have one more for the last corner here okay Go ahead and remove the backings. Again, if this was basic, the black dimensionals, it'd be a lot more forgiving too if it were to show through. Okay, so what I'm doing for this one, I'm gonna lay, keep this laying down. I'm gonna bring the vellum to it. So I'm just gonna line it up starting on the bottom without it touching anything. And then I'll start doing my placing down. So you can push down there, push down there at all the points. And make sure it's sticking. That looks pretty good. Okay, next what we need to do is attach this to our card using glue dots. Anytime you use vellum, you definitely wanna use glue dots just so that they don't show through. So what I'm gonna use is just four glue dots in each one of our corners here. Well, our corners are kind of scalloped off. So then you just pick a spot. I'm gonna do this bottom part there, put the glue dot to the vellum. And let's see here, I'm trying to be behind the black part instead of the vellum, the black border there. Do the same thing up here. Make sure you have it on all four. I press and lift. Oh, that one's getting stuck, so just apply a little bit of heat. That should come off a little bit easier. There we go. 
And one more right there. Perfect. This one came off a little bit, so I'm just gonna fold it back over. It's double sticky on both sides, so it'll be fine. Okay, now we can attach this to our card front, just like so on that left top a little bit. Give yourself about three-fourths of an inch, so you still have borders on top and bottom there. And then let's go ahead and grab our haunted house. So to create this amazing looking window look that is glowing, you could either not do it or or and just leave it like that and that still looks really cool you can see the vellum through the stars through the window but if you want to add a little bit of extra color this is the part to do it and let me show you how so i have these extra little pieces there there we go from our fence perfect so i have about a three fourths by three four scrap that's all this is doesn't have to be perfect you can see it's even like not cut perfectly because it's not even gonna be seen, so it's okay. But we wanna slide that behind our windows like this, and we're gonna see, oh, looks like we have a spot right here we need to get rid of. So what I'm gonna do is do a little snip while I'm holding it. So you can see that to where that corner of the haunted house is. That's gonna give me a reference now of where I need to have this snipped off to this point and go then straight up from that point. Check it, see how that looks, if it was enough. If not, we'll come back and trim some more. So you want that bottom window. Oh, I need a little bit more, it looks like. Let's see, oh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm gonna come down this side, use just the tip of mine, and then do another little snip down. Okay, let's see if that's enough. So that our windows have the mango melody, but oh, we can't see it through. Just a little bit more. Okay, hopefully this is our last trim. Well, I could almost get away with it there. No, we'll do a little, one little bit more. And just come in just a tiny bit and curve it. Okay, hopefully that's our winner. And there we go. That one looks great. Go ahead and flip this over. We're going to put liquid glue on the haunted house itself. And then make sure that we're covering up all of our windows when you place this on. There we go. While we have it facing down, let's grab some dimensionals. And put one on the top. And on the bottom, don't worry about the fence line. You don't need any dimensionals there. Remove the backings. Maybe, there we go. Flip it over and we're gonna add it to the bottom of our branch scene here. For this branch scene, you want to have your haunted house just go so it's overlapping that bottom just a little bit. Like that. Oh, so cute. I'm loving that. And then all we need to do is add our saying right here. We're gonna put some dimensionals, but only on the back right side. So if it helps you just flip it just slightly so you know where that side is. Sometimes when we place it face down, we forget where our greeting is. And then we're gonna have it overlap just a tiny bit on our branch scene there. Super cute. We are gonna add some bats to our scene and a bow with the black and white gigum um, ribbon, which is one of my favorites that I just ordered some more because it's almost out. We're going to take our bow to our glue dot knot. Hold on. There we go. And press down and peel off. And we'll put that right underneath our scary on. This is what's going to make it more cute and less scary, right? A cute little bow. Totally. Add our cute little bats. There's different sizes. For this one, I had like more of a medium size. We're gonna just do two small ones um, on here and one large one. But the dies came with like six different bat sizes, which is pretty awesome. You can cut out more at the same time versus one at a time. 
because I don't want the bats to be alone. And I love that we're doing bats, so that way it matches the inside of our stamped card as well. Put our this guy right up here at an angle. Looks like he's flying in into the night sky. And then this little buddy here too. Just a little bit below him. And there you go. Super cute, scary cute Halloween card with our haunted house, with our cute little bats, our bow to make it super cute, and then our scenes in the inside as well using the starry sky. I hope you guys have had a fun time learning how to make this one. Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and to follow me so you can see my weekly videos. And then also be sure to use the hostess code if you want to order from me. And that way I'll send you some extra happy mail as well. Are right, you guys happy stamping everyone? Have a good weekend. Goodbye.